Hello everybody and welcome back to Juno New Origins where we are currently working on this maneuver here. We'll have a little bit of Delta V left. The real question is, where are we going to be on Drew here? Because that's going to be a real question. <laughs> that'll, that'll be very interesting. I'm wondering... This is 390 meters per second, right? What if we were to back this off a little bit and put this at, say, right about 80? I don't think we have the DV to do this. But if we were to put this like this, that's 385 meters per second, right? And then if we were to move out over here and plan a burn at this periapsis, like so. We would have about 200 meters per second, right? We've got 541, and this burn is 385. Mm, okay, so we would have like 120 meters per second. Yeah, that's that would get us to like here or so. So that's not going to be an option. We're not going to be able to really pick and choose where we want to drop this. We just kind of got to get lucky. Understood. So we'll put it at about there or so. And we'll see if we can steer it a little bit on the way in. That would be nice. But for right now, that's probably not going to end up being the case. So let's go ahead and warp around to this. And we'll commence this burn. Excellent. Shouldn't be a very long burn, but we've only got 4% fuel left. And I would very much like to do a, like, ground-up redesign on this thing to have it be considerably better. Because we're definitely reaching the limits of what this design can do. Okay, so now the question is, as we come in here, this is going to be when? Eight hours. That's the Juno village there. And it's going to have a third of a revolution. This actually might not be too bad in terms of timing. Yeah. Okay. Let's warp around to about here or so. That'll be fine for now. And we're just going to drop on in. Fantastic. So we're going around onto the dark side here. That's fine. And we don't really have too much delta V remaining. We have 151 meters per second. Now, we're still a little high up here, so I'm going to take us to about here or so. Okay, that's about 120. So let's go ahead and stow our solar panels before those break off on us. Wonderful. And I want to be aligned to retrograde. There we go. And surface retrograde is fine here. So we can definitely see we've got a fair amount of speed here. That's understood. And I'd like to commence this burn... I think as we enter the atmosphere should be reasonably fine. So basically fairly close to the periapsis, but we can see that we are 1.8 minutes away from that. I don't want to let that drop down too much, so we're going to burn this right about now. Now that we're in the atmosphere. So that last little bit of fuel comes off there, and now we stage. There we go. So the space capsule is what we want to retain. We want to lock that velocity retrograde. So this is going to still be here, but eventually it'll probably break off. I don't know. It's being held here by arrow forces right now. And for the moment, this is just kind of acting as a heat shield. So that's fine. We're going to throw it away anyway, and I would really like to get better engines in the liquid fuel department. So we're going to see what we can do as far as redesigning this launcher goes. So this stuff up here is going to burn up in the atmosphere. That's understood, or it's going to do that. I guess that works too. So we are going to be dramatically slowing down here, and yeah. Those up there are that, that split off are exploding from excessive heat damage. I'm wondering what the temperature on the solar panel array is. I wonder what the max temperature on that is. We haven't had issues with it burning off previously. It is providing some drag, so there's that. And we can see our temperature is dropping now. So that looks good. 
I want to take a look at our trajectory here. Oh, yeah, that's almost perfect. Because this is where the village... No, this is... That's the Brigo ground station? Wait, where's the village? The village is off over here. Okay, I miscalculated that then. We're about as far from the village as we can get. Well, that's not ideal, but we don't have the DV to choose on that. We're just going to have to pay the penalty. We'll see how expensive that is. Okay, so our current surface velocity is 1,500 meters per second, and I want to fire up these drogue shoots quite soon here. 1,200 meters per second. 1,100. As of now. And we are safe for drogue shoot deployment now. Okay. So I'm just going to get those going. There we go. And then this guy, I'm going to uh, not be armed. Cool. So that'll do for now. Our drogue shoots are slowing us down nicely. They are not going to auto cut this time, and they deploy much higher up. So that looks good. And I'm not interested in firing this guy just yet. Now, we should figure out why the parachutes aren't in the stages. That, that would be a useful thing to do for sure. But that's something that's probably going to come as our as part of our crude rocket redesign, which really needs to happen. This thing is very not great. So that's certainly something that we need to do. So we're currently about 14 kilometers up. We could put in our main chute as of now, but I'm going to let this drop down. Deployment is 11.7 kilometers, so that seems reasonably fine. Are we over water? We're over water. Okay. Beautiful. So I'm going to activate this part now, and it will immediately fire. There we go. Cool. And from here, we should be able to just 2x down to the surface. So these will deploy soon enough. And with these not getting auto-cut, that should have us come down quite a lot slower. We'll see what the deployment feels like. Okay, so all of them deployed simultaneously. That's noted. And we're still 7 kilometers up. Actually, these didn't deploy, did they? This deployed considerably earlier. We should check into that. That is going to take us a while to get down to the ground because of that. So the main shoot is definitely deploying too early. Inflation at 5.81 kilometers versus... Interesting. Interesting. I don't think these are actually deployed. They're supposed to deploy at the same time as it is right now, it looks like. But they may or may not be deployed. Actually, I think they are deployed. So that's reasonably fine. We're just going to coast down to the ground here. We could cut those drogue shoots, and we know it would be perfectly safe. So to be honest, I think we might do that. Uh, let's see here. There's a repack action. There's a deactivate action. Okay, so that's how we would go about cutting it. Okay. So that's noted. So something about like that. And then it's just our main chute bringing us down. So the main chute is definitely opening too high up. But if we're coming down over the mountains, then it's not. That's the thing. So it's much safer to keep it in an in a configuration like this, but it does mean much longer landings at sea level. I wish there was a way to tune it while in flight, but unfortunately you can't do that. So this just kind of is what it is. We're still three and a half kilometers up and it's going to take us some time to get down. But when we don't know exactly where we're going to be landing, this is kind of the way we just gotta, gotta roll with it for right now. Because of the way that the parachutes operate based on atmospheric density, it's very, very different timings to open the parachute if you're going to land in mountains or if you're going to land at sea level. Very different, or even below sea level. So that is certainly interesting. Very different from how KSP-2 does it, or KSP-1. Well, we're moving at about 14 meters per second right now, and now 13. So we're slowing down, but we're still 2 kilometers up right now. Like I said, this is this opened up way too high, 
if we're coming down over the water like this, but it wouldn't have been too high if we were coming down on mountains. It may have been opening too late on mountains, actually. So that's all very interesting, for sure. We're currently 1,500 meters up, and our air density is continuing to go up, of course. Ambient temperature is not too bad. We're not going to have any heat issues at this point. And we just need to continue to let this thing drop. It's going to be about two minutes at normal speed, so about one minute at this speed, in theory. Because we're moving at 13 meters per second, and, well, it would actually be a little shorter than that. It won't be too bad. We're about 800 meters up now. But yeah, this definitely... The way that it works on air density makes things a little awkward if you don't know what your landing site is going to be. So that, of course, means that we want to know what our landing site is going to be. We, need, we want to know if we're targeting a land landing or if we're targeting a water landing, for sure. And here we are on the ground at this point. So we can recover this flight. And the question is, how much is that going to cost? Only 977k. That's interesting. This is way cheaper than it was before while being further away. Okay, so I don't understand how this recovery cost is calculated then. But we'll still recover it. We made lots of money from that regardless, so that sounds good. Now, we have 102 tech points, but I want to check in here. This is rescuing one druid. Hmm. That's understood. We've also got this progression mission to orbit Luna, which this would be pretty easy. This is a putting an explorer probe into this location. Sure, we could do that. I'll accept that, but let's hop into the tech tree here. So, what I want to do is I want to be looking for... Let's see, that's going to give us the piston leg. Whoa, that was not what I wanted. Back into the tech tree. Okay, so the piston leg is not really what we're looking for. So this will give us solid booster engine types, which would be very useful for us, actually. Cone nozzles... The Ifrit Solid Booster, we should take this. That would be a significant boost to us. Orbital Maneuvers here would give us access to the Spirit Engine. We should also take this. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to go into our crude launcher here. Well, really, I want to open up our satellite launcher. So that will be our small sat launcher. That's this guy. And the question now is, if we were to put in this exploration satellite, how big and heavy is this? So this is the explorer probe here. So I want to take off our fairing. Okay, it actually fits inside our existing fairing. So that's neat. And then this, of course, is the gnome engine. I want to take a look at the engine costs here. So the spirit engine is 12k compared to the gnome engine's 30k so it's a lot cheaper that ifrit solid booster is quite expensive it claims to be cheap but i'm not so sure about that so the spirit engine is cheaper than the gnome engine it is very small in comparison let's just pop this off for right now and let's take a look at what we can do with the engine size here Okay, so I want to check the specific impulse. The specific impulse is lower, at least currently. The nozzle throat size, wait, I want to make sure that we're in vacuum. We are, okay. So maximized nozzle length and the throat size will decrease the nozzle ratio, which decreases efficiency in a vacuum. Yeah, so we want the throat size to be at 50%. So 205 is the maximum specific impulse this thing can get. Oh, it's monoprop? Oh. Well, that's interesting. So 2.67 thrust to weight... Two, or rather, not, not thrust to weight. Uh, I want to say 267 meters per second. 
not meters per second, seconds of specific impulse, 203, 200. Okay, so we're in the gas generator power cycle. This is pressure fed, which would actually be higher specific impulse. And then our fuel type is currently Carolox, and we don't have an option there. Okay, so our thrust to weight here is quite low. Noted. But look how cheap this is. 157k. I mean, that's a little more expensive than what we've got here, but, like, the, the, the gas generator type is the type that's so much more expensive. So pressure-fed is a lot cheaper. That's really good to know. So... This is currently a slightly higher specific impulse. And if we were to swap these, this is a higher thrust to weight. So assuming we're already in orbit, this is okay. But this is a considerably larger nozzle. So I'm going to get rid of that for now. That's an interesting option for our crude launcher, but I don't think it's necessary for this guy here. Now, the question is, do we have enough DV in this? Well, I want to drop this down to be about a five meter length, like so, to be about like that. So I want to add some additional delta V in there. And I definitely want to adjust what we've got going on with these engines down here. So these solid rocket motors, we have much, much bigger SRBs now. So we can get rid of our ridiculous number of these. And that is definitely something that we want to do. So we're going to do that for now. We're currently looking at a fairly cheap price to launch this, for sure. So we get rid of all of these. And we're going to do the same on the main booster as well. But for now, I want to work on these. Okay. So we have access now to our Ifrit solid booster. So that is apparently 2 million to put that in. Okay. So we would want to drop down the size of that a little bit. And that also bumped up the size of our side boosters. So we'd want that to be something like that. And this is now 1.5 million. Okay, so power cycle of amateur versus power cycle of booster. Okay, so that makes this a lot more expensive. Noted. Okay, so we want this to have relatively, relatively short nozzle length, most likely. Because I want this to have very high thrust to weight at the beginning. And actually, this is incredibly high thrust to weight at the beginning. Uh, we should probably have this be ramp up thrust to weight. Hmm. Something kind of like that. I'm actually wondering if maybe we just ditch the side boosters entirely. And just put this right here in the center. That's probably going to be the way to go. So we would get rid of all of these, and then we would put in the Ifrit Solid Booster, like that. And then we would probably end up bumping up the size of this a little bit, up to about... Like, 165 is probably about right. Somewhere around there. Maybe like 168. Something like that. Okay, and now we would set the nozzle length to be zero to increase our efficiency at sea level, right? So 187 at sea level versus... Okay, so the actual peak efficiency is 192 seconds, so a nozzle length of about 33. So something like that at sea level would be ideal. Now the throat size... So that will increase thrust. Our thrust is way higher than it needs to be, to be honest. And I want this to be in ramp up mode, I think. Maybe ramp down is right. I'm just looking at this ending thrust to weight, which is quite low. But this isn't changing the ending thrust to weight. 
So that's fine. We could do a bell nozzle, which the bell nozzle would be, I think, worse than the cone nozzle at sea level. Actually, it's slightly better. And we're seeing some potential shock diamonds there. Okay. So the nozzle throat size might need to be altered a little bit here with that, with that bell nozzle. Yeah. So we would want to put this at like 68 or 70%, something like that. It's still quite expensive, but that is definitely intriguing. Okay, so it would end up being something kind of like this. That seems pretty good, actually. So, let's find out if we have the thrust to weight. Well, not, not really the thrust to weight. I'm not actually concerned about the thrust to weight. Our starting thrust to weight is going to be insane off of the pad. So, the question is, do we have the delta V to get to where we're going? That is definitely an interesting question. I'm also interested in potentially putting some fins on this guy, and we would put in some slightly larger fins that would be something kind of like this, kind of maximize the size of them. And then we would put that to be, well, actually, can we add a control surface yet? No, we can't do that yet. Okay, that's fine. So now we would take this up to like 4X symmetry, something like this. Okay, so with that in mind, we can check our staging, and that would be in here. So this is going to be, the Explorer Probe should not be here. Let's add a stage up this way, the Explorer Probe would go there. So we've got the Ifrit, this is an empty stage. This would be the Gnome and the Inter stage. This would be the Fairing, and then the Explorer. That seems right. Okay, let's save that craft as our small sat launcher. This is going to be a lot more expensive to launch. And the question now is, how much are we getting paid for this? So, this mission here is only 535k. This is definitely going to be very negative in terms of how much we're getting paid. So that's noted. We may want to take this over to an amateur. Hmm. I'm just noting those shock diamonds there. Uh, for the moment, this might be reasonably fine. Yeah, I'm just experimenting with these different nozzle styles. So, we're not going to get paid very much for this. So, that means that we probably want to go back to, like, our older craft design. But I kind of don't want to. I want to see how this ends up going. We can we can view this as a demonstrator. We're definitely going to lose money on this, but I want to see just how effective this actually is. So let's put this out on the alley pad. It's going to cost us like 6 million to launch this, and we're getting paid like 500,000. That is definitely not ideal, but let's put this at like 45 degrees for right now. Actually, with this thrust to weight, we can probably put it at like 20 degrees. And let's just launch this thing. Oh boy, that's fast. We're probably going to burn up in the atmosphere at this thrust to weight, aren't we? Like, this is way too much. Well, we're definitely going to run out of fuel quickly. No doubt about that. What's that apoapsis looking like? Very high up there. Okay. So we're taking heat damage. Like I said, that's not surprising. What is surprising is that the fairing isn't really protecting it. But okay. Well, let's just bring ourselves on over here. And we want to get a bunch of lateral velocity. So we weren't really able to turn while doing that. That's understood. And I'm not sure that we even want to fly this thing. I just want to see how it performs more than anything. So how much dB do we have in this? Five kilometers? Okay. That's certainly noted. So, our lateral velocity is going to need to work its way up quite a lot. So, we definitely need to rework those booster stages. That's for sure. There's too much power in it, and I'm, I'm just going to bring this back. It's too expensive. There's too much power in it. We could definitely get there with this, but it would be very expensive. 
So I'm going to ditch this engine, and we're going to go back to what we had before with the gnome engines. Or actually, the goblin engines. So these goblin SRBs, I want to maximize their size. And I also want to make sure that the nozzle throat size is maximized, which it is. Okay, so our power cycle is amateur, and wow. Okay, 14.5 million. Hilarious. Our power cycle should remain amateur. I want the engine type to be solid. Our fuel grain could be either ramp up or ramp down, but I'm going to keep it as basic, I think, for now. I think a cone is fine. And the nozzle length being zero is, I think, ideal here. So yeah, it'll be something kind of like this. Then we're going to bring in another group of them. Like that. And then another group of them up over here. So these are still new engines. So that's noted. Another group here. And then a group here. And then a group, like, here-ish, which is going to be mildly awkward. And then we need another group about here, which I want to move these inward a little bit, and these outward a little bit, and these can go about, like, I don't know. I don't love this positioning, but something kind of like that. So this thrust to weight is 2.44 right here. So that would do the trick, and this is way cheaper. It's not cheap enough to cover our costs, but we could definitely take a loss on this mission of this amount. It's not a significant loss. Okay, let's go ahead and put this out on the pad. It'll be a launch fee of 690k, so that is understood. Does that include the cost of this? I don't think it does. So this is going to be a loss of like 500,000. I'm not too concerned about it. It's a progression mission, and it's a very low payment amount. So this is definitely better, no doubt about that. Let's pitch this to about 45 degrees, and let's send this right on off. Let's see if we have enough thrust to weight to get us up to orbit here. I suspect we do. We're definitely gimbaling well. No doubt about that. Okay. So we're starting to throttle down here. Our apoapsis is about 50 kilometers, but we just need a very cheap rocket to do this, right? This isn't going to be profitable still, but... Let's go ahead and lift off here. Yeah, that explodes from excessive heat damage. Not shocking. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to bring us down to a pitch of zero. But we're going to have this apoapsis dropping. So really, we should be on prograde here. Were we just out over here for some reason? I don't know why we'd be there. But okay, sure. So I want to hold us at a pitch of about 25 degrees for right now. That'll be okay. And we're high enough up that we should be able to ditch our fairing, which is the next stage here. So let's do that and boost up our thrust to weight a decent amount. Uh, only one half of the fairing went away. What? <laughs> Hang on. There's something very wrong with our staging then, clearly. Why is only one half of our fairing on that staging? I don't think that's how that works, is it? No, that should have been both. Interesting. I wonder if that was held there by arrow forces? Wild. Very wild. Regardless, we're going to launch this next episode. It's time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to launch this thing. We'll take a loss on this, but it's a progression mission. I want to get it over with. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Atala, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Xenocyte, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, The Lounge STL, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.